Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today I'm working on a project. We're working on the Steam Stoker engine, and I got a few parts I need to make for that, and I thought today would be a good day to do it. Uh, I actually got started on this, making my little a tapered key that we got here. This has all been hardened. It's a very precise taper, one inch per foot. We're going to be using this to make these tapered keys. Uh, and what these are is these, these little keys... This is an old one, it's pretty much beat up, but it's, it's tapered, it's got a taper on it. This is the uh, piston rod that attaches to the cross head on the machine, and this tapered key basically goes in here and keys that um, the cross head to the piston rod. So it's tapered, you hammer it in there, and it just locks in place and holds everything in place between the two pieces. Um, the ones that were in there are old, they're bent, they're been abused, they're rusted, they're going to be replaced. Let me zoom you in here. I'll show you the old ones. I'll show you my drawing, and I'll, we're going to be showing you the process we use. And we're going to be doing this job today, mostly over here on the horizontal milling machine. So here we go. These are the original tapered keys that were in there. And you can see uh, that one's bent pretty good. That one's got a little bit of a bend in it. Uh, they're pretty much been rusted up and in pretty rough shape and uh, we're going to be replacing those. So I've got the blueprints here. They're supposed to be five inches long, uh, 13 16 inch on the small uh, end, actually five and a quarter inches when you include the little uh, pieces on the ends. Uh, they're just kind of flared out where you can hammer them and they won't mushroom. We'll just probably do that little part on the grinder. Now one of the things that we got to do is these are uh, rounded over so that's a they're uh, Three eighths inch thick, so you got a three eighths inch uh, diameter, or uh, what would it be a three sixteenths inch radius around uh, that diameter there, around that edge, and that's on both sides. Uh, so that's what we're going to be you doing over here on the horizontal mill. I've got a piece of just uh, stock here. This is a three sixteenths inch thick. I think it's about an inch and a quarter inch wide, and uh, put the round over on there. We're going to be using this cutter right here. Uh, this is just a uh, horizontal mill cutter, but it has a 3 8 inch radius into it. So we'll just kind of run that along the outside edge. My plan is, is we will uh, go ahead and cut one side just parallel to the bar. Then we'll flip it over. We'll use our little jig that we made here. This is a tapered uh, fixture that's the right taper. We'll put that up underneath it in the vise and that'll get our part basically sitting on top of that kind of like such. I can go and go across the I'll have a parallel surface to the machine that I can go across the top and cut the other side and we should have the right taper and everything should be cool. So that's the game plan. Let's get our horizontal mill set up over here to do this job. First thing I want to do here is I want to tram my vise in, make sure that it is running parallel to the machine. And uh, this vise was trammed in last time I used it, uh, but I always like to double check it between jobs just to make sure something hasn't bumped around uh, or moved. So I've got a stare at last word indicator on here. I just got a little Noga holder that's holding it in place. I'm uh, going to start by zeroing that out. So we'll just uh, move the table toward me using the hand wheel on the machine. So we get to zero right there and then I will just use the rapid traverse and we'll sweep across there and I know this that vice jaw is not perfectly flat it looks like it's about a thou out right now I'm gonna loosen up the bolts here on the on the one side of the vise and I'm just going to bump it over back over to zero. I'm going to tighten my vise back down and now we'll go back the other way. And like I said, I know I got a little spot there in the middle where it kind of drops off a little bit. We're a little less than a half a thou. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bump it around a little bit more. It's probably more than good enough and I'm probably asking for trouble by trying to move it that last little bit. Let me get that back to zero. All right, let's sweep back across. And 
I'm gonna loosen my vise back up and we'll bump it back over. See what that looks like. From end to end, it's on zero. There's probably about a quarter of a thou, but I, again, I know that vice jaw isn't perfect, so uh, it's good enough. Let's uh, move on here. Next thing I wanna do is build my arbor up. I've got my uh, one inch arbor in here, so this one inch diameter. It's already got some spacers on the back, and uh, I wanna go ahead and put my cool tool in here. I want to be cutting in a uh, clockwise direction, so, uh, Got that cutter going on here in the proper direction. There is a, a keyway over here that drives that, so I'll line that up. And now I'm just gonna get some spacers and uh, we'll put some spacers down here to the end as well as our bearing blocks. So let me grab those. So there's another spacer, another spacer. Put our, uh, that spacer's too much. See what we got here yeah that's my bearing and our nut to tighten it all up here on the end now i'm just going to finger type that right now tell you what i'm going to drop this table down a little bit give me some room i'm going to pull my overarm support out past the end of the arbor I always like to put this on the overarms first. It's hard to get all three holes lined up perfectly, but I can get the two on the top pretty easily. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up. Make sure we got some oil in here. I got a little reservoir filled up, but uh, I always like to make sure there's some on there to start with. Now, I'm going to just uh, pull the uh, support over that bearing and it just lines up nice and perfectly. It's a lot easier than trying to get them to all three go up on there together. I've learned from uh, past experience. Now with all that done, I'm gonna tighten up the nut here on the end. You always wanna tighten this up with the support supporting the bearing. If you don't, you can put so much torque on this long arm, it's sticking out so far, you can bend your arbor very easily. So I always wait until I have it out, get that on there good and tight, and our arbor is built. All right, I've got my uh, cutter kind of eyeballed, centered up over this thing. What I want to do is, uh, it's gonna feed down a little bit and come across that. And what I'm looking for here is to make sure that I'm not cutting in one side or the other on this cutter. And it looks like right now I'm not even cutting at all. So let me uh, come back out. And raise up some more. Let's cut back across. If this thing is properly lined up, I won't have a, a gouge on either side where it's cutting into it. It'll just be kind of radiused over on both sides. And if anything, I might just need to go in Yeah, so looks like I just need to take the table toward the machine, just a couple of thou. All right, I moved my table in a, a couple of thou here, and uh, we're gonna make another pass across this and uh, see if that doesn't help. But I, I raise the table up a little bit more, so I'm taking a little bit more of a cut now.
I think I still need to go in about another two or three thou. So we're going to make another adjustment. I'm adjusting in one, two, I'm going three thou. I'm going to raise the table up a little bit more. And here we come back across. That's blending in very nicely on both sides. I think I'm happy with that. Now the secret is, uh, the trick is to get it all the way up into the top of that uh, where it's cutting all the way up into the top and I'm just gonna eyeball it here. That's going to be real close. I'm going to let it feed across there a little bit. And it is taking a full profile. So uh, we'll just let that uh, cut on across there. Seems to be cutting really nice. Uh, I like the surface finish I'm getting. Uh, this is the second one we're wrapping up here. Uh, I'm, I'm, I am gonna make four of these. Uh, the, the group up in Nashville that I'm working with on this project, they've got another stoker engine up there uh, that they're gonna have as a spare and figure as long as I'm making them and I got the material, I just go ahead and make four so they'd have a extra set uh, to use with their other, other restoration as well. So. We'll, uh, after this one gets done, I'll uh, finish up the other two and we'll bring you back and show you the next step to cut the taper on them. So there are four pieces with the first side cut. That's the easy side. Now we got to cut the taper in there. Uh, we're going to do that using the same setup, similar setup anyway. So let's get that going. So now we're ready to do the taper and I got this uh, taper gauge that I made. I'm going to put this down in the bottom of my vise. It's, it's just a little bit thinner than the material that we're putting in on top of it. And I'm lining it up flush with this end. That's going to be kind of my control to get consistent setups here. And the other piece I'm laying on top. I'm putting the side we've already cut the radius down. And again, I'm lining it up right there on the end. Um, tighten that up. And now I should be able to cut that parallel line to the, it's parallel to the table, but obviously we got the taper in there and it should duplicate that taper on this side. So I'm not gonna try to do this in one pass. I'll we'll probably try to in two passes, uh, do a rough cut across here, get some of this material off, and then may even have to do three passes, guys. I'll just kind of play it by ear, uh, but let's, um, let's see what we can do. Put some cutting oil on here. Let her go through there and um, I'm gonna be taking off a good little bit here. Well, not too bad. I think what I'm gonna do is uh, we'll cut one, we'll swap parts and then cut the next one. And that way I can just move the cutter down or move the, yeah, the cutter, uh, table up, cutter down, whatever you wanna say. And, uh, work our way across this. I think I could have made a little bit deeper cut on that first pass. Looks like it made mostly of a full radius to start with. And we're flaring out now. All right, I think we're through cutting there. I'm gonna pull it on up to the front and we'll swap that part out. All right, part two, put it in there again, line up our edges. 
tighten that up in the vise. I am going to raise up a little bit more. Um, take a little bit deeper of a cut this time, I think. All right. Cutting all. Just let her eat across there. All right, I've cut my first pass on all these and we're getting ready now to do the second pass. I raised my table up 150 thou, which is a pretty good cut. I don't know how this is gonna do. Uh, we may have to slow our feed rate down. We'll play it by ear. Literally, we'll listen to what it sounds like and make an adjustment as necessary. Sounds like she's eating pretty good, so we're going to let her cut on through. It's flaring on out now, but uh, I think that cut went just fine. We'll go ahead and do it on the rest of them as well. I'll bring you back uh, when we do our next pass. All right, that was my last one on this particular set height. So we're gonna raise the table up another 150 thou and uh, take yet another pass. So uh, let me go ahead and get this one oiled up again. Turn my height. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 10, 20, 30, 40, 150 thou, right there. All right. Come on down. Cutting just fine. Kind of see where we're at. Uh, we've down at least three quarters of the length, rounded over at the top, and uh, it's starting to take on that taper. So I got another pass I'll have to make on that, and hopefully I can do it one more pass. We'll uh, we'll have to see. So let me uh, go ahead and get the rest of these cut at that setting, and uh, we'll bring you back again here in a minute. That was the last one on this uh, particular setup and been doing some measuring and I need to take 40 more thousandths off of the height and that should uh, get the small end right on size. And remember, I, I cut these a little bit long, uh, so about an, three quarters of an inch long. So probably not gonna clean up all the way to the end, but that's okay because we're gonna cut it off anyway. So uh, let's go up another 40 thou, 10, 20, 30, 40, right there. And uh, that should bring us right to size. And be a nice light pass for this finish cut too, which uh, should hopefully result in a little bit better finish.
All right, so we have our tapers cut here to length. Everything's good. I've measured the short end, which is supposed to be 13 16 so about a eighth of an inch in, because we've still got another little operation to do down here. But those are all within spec. I've gone ahead and cut them off to length uh, so that uh, see we still had just a little bit that didn't quite cover the top. But again, that's going to be kind of rounded over. Uh, it's, it's, it's not in an area that's, that is coming in any contact anyway, so that's going to be just fine. So next step here, looking at the drawings, uh, we've got to kind of round over these ends and then just kind of um, bevel those out. So um, I'm just going to take that over to the belt sander and uh, we'll do that and then uh, drill the hole for the cotter pin to keep it from slipping out. And I think we'll have these done. So over to the belt sander. Over at my belt sander, I've scribed a line on here an eighth of an inch in, and uh, I just want to kind of radius these out to that line. Then I want to kind of radius them in a little bit the other way. Last step, it calls for an eighth inch hole, quarter of an inch from the end or a quarter inch from that right there. We need to add an eighth to that. So and then a uh, half of 13 sixteenths would be half teen, 13 30 seconds. I've laid them out here. We're over on the anvil. Uh, I'm just gonna center punch these and then we'll go over to the drill press and drill them out. This uh, whole position is just for a pin to keep that um, whole key from coming out. It's not super critical position wise, so I'm not going to the trouble to lay it out over on the mill or anything like that. All right, uh, to the drill press, we'll drill these out. All right, we got an eighth inch drill bit in here. And we'll go ahead and drill these on out. And uh, I went and just deburred these uh, holes I drilled by hand, took them over to my scotch Bright wheel and just kind of polished them up a little bit, cleaned them up, and I think these are done. These are right to the drawings, right to spec, and uh, should be ready to go in. I did go grab the crosshead. Let me show you how this goes together, just so you can kind of get a better idea. So this is the crosshead that goes in the steam engine. There's a rod that goes between this and the crankshaft. And then this piece on the bottom is actually a Babbitt material. And it slides back and forth in a slot. And then coming out of the front of that is our uh, piston rod. And this piston rod has been cut off. But um, we're, we're going to be making new ones. It goes in there. And basically what the crosshead does is it changes the orientation of the piston rod where instead of it on that crankshaft it's kind of rocking up and down and this makes it go straight in and out because it's going into some packing and uh, there's a slot in it uh, there's a tapered slot right here and basically what we do is we take this uh, key and just drive it down in there and I'm not going to do that right now because it's going to tighten it up in there and I'm not ready I've, I've already had to take this one out I don't want to put it back in so you got you got the taper on the key and when you drive that in there it's going to be very tight there's also a taper a matching taper between these two parts so when you pull that together it's very tight in there as well so uh, those keys uh, key our tapered surfaces there all hold that together very well and with that guys that is going to be a wrap we got a set of crosshead keys 
uh, for our steam engine when we put this thing back together, uh, which hopefully is not going to be too far in the distant future. Uh, still got some more parts to make. Uh, I actually uh, sent some parts out to some fellow YouTubers uh, that reached out to me, wanted to collaborate on this project. So uh, I've got several parts that have been sent to some other creators and they're going to be making those parts uh, and creating videos on their channels and we'll be linking back over to them. Uh, so those are kind of in the works at right now. We're not in any huge hurry. So as those come in, I will share uh, those projects and those pieces and uh, let you go take a look at some other guys and let us see how they uh, go about making parts uh, for the Steam Stoker engine. But fun little project. Always enjoy using my, my K&T, my Kearney Trekker horizontal milling machine over there. It's a joy to use. I just love that machine. And uh, nice project here for doing these uh, radius over ends on these, uh, on these uh, keys. So that worked out really well. That's going to be it, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Comments are appreciated. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And a thumbs up are appreciated as well. And guys, we will catch you on the next video. Mm -hmm.